Hey Brawlers, I'm Mr. Hudat, and this is a patch review for the new October 18th patch. I'll be going over my thoughts on each change and how I feel they will impact the meta. I'll normally be making these videos the day the patch releases, I just wasn't feeling up to it until today, and took a little break from playing Brawl and making videos. Another addition to my video series will be a monthly tier list made at the start of each month, where I go over where I feel each hero stands in the meta, and why changes are made from my previous month's tier list, so look out for that. Now, let's get to it. In patch 63.4, we see a new hero, a new spell, a new card, six new treasures, and many meta-defining changes. I want to start by applauding the dev team for making such big changes, even if the community may not like some of them. To keep the game fresh, it's important to constantly change what's being played the most, and what's being played the least, and I think they did a good job of that this patch. Starting off with the newest hero edition of the patch, we have Headless Horseman. This hero is clearly middle of the pack, not too strong, but not too weak as well. I like that you can have your own playstyle with how you utilize his kidnaps, he's really fun and engaging to play. I also like how you can choose to play around Kidnap by not playing units for turn 1 or 2, or playing your weakest unit up front. I think it's great when the enemy hero changes the way you want to position your board, as well as there being a mind game to early Kidnap uses. This was a great addition to the game. I was afraid with the Miri and Fallen Angel patch that all the newer heroes would be extremely strong and we'd see massive power creep, but this hero is very well balanced and gives me hope that new heroes won't just be absurd. They noted here that Kidnap and Gloves of Thieving will no longer steal statues, which is a much welcome change, as I'm sure everyone has had statue triples from Medusa and Gloves of Thieving. Moving on to the new unit, we have Fiona. I showcased this card and the new hero pretty well in my Headless Horseman video. If you haven't already, you should check it out after this. Fiona has a pretty unique effect that generates units whenever she slays. When slaying once a turn, she can be compared to Lucky with similar stats, cost, and effect giving you economy each turn. What differentiates her from Lucky is that you can apply her effect multiple times using Grimsoul, as well as her tribalism being good, princess, and monster allows her to be thrown into many different mid-game compositions as a filler unit, whereas Lucky will only last a couple of turns. Fiona is a great addition to the game, and was very fun to make use of during testing. When you're able to get the dream scenario of a slow-paced lobby and adding in Grimsouls and Baba Yagas, her power gets you so many units that you can't even hold them all. We now have our new spell addition to the game, Mixawizzle. This spell has previously been in the game multiple times I believe, and this rendition feels just as fun as the last. Pretty much every time I saw this spell in the shop, I cast it onto an upgraded Cinderella or other tier 2 unit I kept in hand. The cost is very low for what it provides, making it a great cast all the way up until endgame where you want to be casting Pygamorph only. I think this spell is a good re-addition to the game, I just wish the cost was at least 2, if not 3. Moving on to treasures, we have Noble Steed. This is the third treasure in the game now that can cheat you higher level treasures. I love that they're giving a treasure that synergizes with quest units, as I felt it kind of weird that the units that revolved around treasures didn't have one of their own. I'm a bit weary of there being so many level cheat treasures, as getting a high roll opponent that found himself a very early tier 6 treasure can be a bit tilting. I'm hoping this treasure changes to just buff quest units, maybe even make their quest easier to complete, but I wish they'd stop adding this reward treasures one level higher effect. Six of Shields is a pretty mediocre treasure that mirrors the effect of Ring of Rage. Attack is generally a much better stat than health, and I found myself never wanting to take this treasure during testing. Four is a very low impact slot for treasures, and this just continues that trend. Moonsong Horn is a much better treasure, and exactly what the four slot needs. This treasure provides good stats and a good effect that gives you economy each turn. This is another treasure that can help mages and help you go off with crystal ball even if you don't find your hat. This is a great addition to the game, and I'll be picking up this treasure very often. Moving on to level 6 treasures, we see the Ark. This treasure is very fun to play with, and very impactful once you get it. This allows you to play completely different compositions late game, utilizing each tier of unit and the possibilities with this treasure are endless. This is a great addition to the game. The effect is very fun to use, but not too overpowering for opponents to deal with. Pandora's Box is another level cheat type treasure, 
but this one comes with a gigantic downside of having to wait two turns. The one time that I took this, I ended up dying. This treasure is a very greedy take, as at tier 6, you want to make a giant impact right away. The only time I'll be taking this is if I get it early. This is an interesting addition to the game, but it's a fairly weak treasure though. Black Prism is the ultimate spell treasure that mages needed. This treasure is ridiculous when paired with other spell treasures. The one time I played with this, I immediately turned my 9 units into 3 croc bait triples and 3 tier 6 treasures, one of them being double cast spells. I then picked up Good Boy, turned every croc into a good character with beauty's influence, and double cast multiple plus 10 health and attack buffs onto every character. Despite all of that, I still lost. So this treasure, although insane when used over multiple turns, can still be dealt with with other compositions. This is a great addition to the game, but it will be tilting to play against it a few times, but that's okay. Mages should have something insane to play with. Ending the new additions to the game, you may have noticed Mad Hat and Bugbear aren't added yet, if you've been watching the beta content. I'm very happy Mad Hat isn't in the game yet. That treasure is pickable in every situation, and is basically the new plus 100 sword, as it fits every comp and immediately makes you incredibly strong. Bugbear was complained about being too weak. I felt he was in a great spot, but I guess we'll see him a bit stronger in his next iteration. Moving on to the changes, we see Spear of Achilles, with an additional plus 2 plus 2 added for each attack. Spear was overshadowed by plus 100 and double attack. With this buff, this treasure becomes a lot more pickable. This is a great change. It's a bit too strong when taken early though. The biggest change of this patch is plus 100 moving to tier 7. This changes everything. This was the most picked tier 6 treasure, and made up most endgame compositions. When you weren't playing this treasure, you were at a big disadvantage, which is why this move was a great change. This frees up other treasures to shine, and creates a more versatile endgame instead of plus 100 on Good Boy, Doom Breath, or Baby Bear. Pied Piper giving his extra animal plus 1 plus 1 is a gigantic buff. This hero was unarguably the lowest of the low before this patch, and this buff definitely brings him up a few tiers. Giving stats in the early game is crucial, and now that he's able to do that with a powerful effect, he will definitely be a meta pick. This is a great change. Making weak heroes into middle of the pack heroes is a great way to balance the game. Previously the least picked level 5 unit, Wombat is now good and fun to use. This fixes the problem of it summoning 1-1s and leads to funny situations when it turns itself into special units like Doubly or Friendly Spirit. This game needs some more units that reward you greatly for buffing them. This is a great change made to the game. I'd like to see him be good aligned, so it's not as much of a wasted slot to play and is easier to buff him. Shoulder Fairies moving down to tier 5 is a much needed change. This card isn't that useful unless it's upgraded, and now it's a lot easier to have them upgraded by tier 6. I've been picking fairies a lot more often now and keeping them around in my final composition because of this change. Evola losing the 1 toughness is a pretty big nerf. Previously, this character was unmatched in mid game strength, and it felt very bad having to go against her knowing there's no chance for you to win the fight. This change gives you the opportunity to trade with her backline instead of just rolling over to it. I think Evola will still be strong and played, but will no longer be a top 5 hero. Lordy now buffs Princess White as well as his other dwarves when she's in your 7 unit composition. This is a pretty weird change, but I see a lot of complaints about having to take out White late game. Princess White now no longer gets buffed each time a dwarf dies, but only when you buy dwarves. I played around a lot with this change, and she's still viable to take right at tier 3 and force dwarves, but her stat line gets basically cut in half at mid game, as I was only having her at around 40-40 stats instead of 80-80. Transitioning out of dwarves is now a lot harder, as you can't just rely on white to carry you while you find your transition units. I would much rather see white move back to tier 4 than to gimp her stats entirely. White at tier 4 was a normal game flow for dwarves with white being in line with other tier 4 mid game units, and dwarves being slightly better than other compositions. White in her current state makes dwarves a floundering composition to get into, where you're weak for a while and barely keeping up with the rest of the lobby with no end game in sight. White needed a change, but this was not it. Copycat turning into a 212 helps keep it alive in order to get its effect off, but this is still a niche unit only viable with Hermes boots in a 6 unit composition 
with specific upgraded units. Fallen Angel now no longer gets her aura proc with summon units. Fallen Angel was a top 3 hero undoubtedly, and this change doesn't affect her too much, but it stops her from abusing summoning units to get her power to go off. Ring of Rage sees a buff now, giving backline units plus 3 attack as well. Rage was one of the better tier 4 treasures, so I'm not sure why this one is buffed over others. This buff greatly affects Fairy Godmother compositions, as their backline units needed attack to pair with the massive health gained from Fairy Godmother. Tier 4 needs more impactful treasures, so I welcome this change, but would like to see other treasures buffed as well. Soltok is now moved to tier 4, making him a much more pickable unit, and not just an endgame niche counter to Doombreath and Mittens. When paired with Heartwood Elder for static buffs, Soltok becomes a mid-game monster and was a great addition to the mid-game Trent composition. This was a great change, and we'll be seeing a lot more successful Trent compositions now. Ride of the Valkyries is now plus 3 attack instead of plus 2. This change helps an unplayable spell become slightly less unplayable. I'll still never really buy this spell, but it's a welcome change when I get it randomly, I guess. Morgan Le Fay now gives her treasure right at her health breakpoint, instead of under it. This is a pretty meaningless change, it just helps reduce people that complain that they never got their treasure at 20 or 5 health. Fairy Godmother gets a big nerf, with only plus 2 health given now, and only plus 4 health when upgraded, instead of plus 6. Fairy Godmother dominated the mid game with dwarves. Now with dwarves getting gimped, Fairy Godmother needed a change as well. This unit is still very playable. Play a pole. Yeah, play, yeah, play a pole. Yeah, that's a word. Play a pole. Play a pole. It's still very play a pole. This unit is still very playable, but just less impactful now. Wild growth taken out is a sad day for trees. I'd like to see this treasure replaced with a different trench specific treasure, as they lost their plus three attack treasure a few patches ago. Snow Angel now buffs the extra unit her power gives. This is a pretty good change, but it doesn't help her too much. When compared to Pied Piper, Snow Angel's buff is much worse. She'll still be a low tier hero, and I'll avoid playing her despite me enjoying her power. Good Boy gets taken out back and shot in the leg, despite already losing his plus 100 bone. This change wasn't really that necessary, although it now allows Robin Wood and Ugly Gosling to buff Good Boy more often. Dracula loses his plus 1 toughness buff. I played with this change a few times, and New Sad Drac is still very strong but his wall composition is a lot less playable now that you can't buff your toughness to survive multiple hits. The best way to play him now is to buff multiple units once and play a mid game composition of high attack units. Shrivel no longer does nothing to the toughness of damaged characters. This is a very welcome change, I hated seeing Shrivel do nothing for me in the middle of the fight. Dream now gives 4 pure random heroes not in the game, rather than 1 free to play in slot 1 and 1 new hero in slot 4. This is a good change, as I'd much rather 4 random heroes with Dream. Moving on to bug fixes, the most important one is that they stopped infinite Grim Souls from infinitely attacking from slot 1. This is a very weird change, as that composition wasn't without a counter, and this way of changing it doesn't really do much to the long combat, as slot 1 Grim Soul will attack 5 times, then slot 2 Grim Soul 5 times, then slot 3 Grim Soul, etc. Calling this a bug fix also doesn't make much sense, as it wasn't a bug. Overall, this was a great patch. I'm happy with most of these changes, and I welcome the brand new meta. With white being nerfed considerably, the meta will be much slower paced, making plays for XP, polywoggle, and mid-game scaling way more impactful. I'll be grinding this patch in preparation for the October tournament in a few days. I might make a few videos of my tournament matches depending on how well they go. Thank you all for watching, let me know what you liked or disliked about this patch review in the comments below, and I hope to improve and bring more content like this in the future.